Hey gang, Evan Sutton here. Today we're going to talk about Massive. We're going to make a nice big bass sound using uh, the hard clipper and a wave shaper. We're going to make it modulate a little bit. We're going to add some movement. And uh, most of all, we're going to have a little bit of fun. So put on your riding hat because we're about to get moving. Here's a little sequence I put together. I did a drum part using battery. I split out the kick drum so that we can get some side chain compression going on the bass sound. And uh, let's go ahead and take a listen. <laughs> So by no means a finished track or anything like that, but we've got uh, a nice backbone to it. So uh, to get started, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up Massive and let's just create a new instance of Massive by going to File, New. And what we're going to start out with is a really simple sound here. Let me solo this out and I'll turn off the sidechain compression. And we'll start out just using the sawtooth. So this, these are hybrid waves here. This is a wavetable synthesizer. So we've got uh, square saw combinations. I'm just going to use square saw one. And as we move this position knob, we can move between that square wave and that sawtooth wave. I like a sawtooth wave a whole lot. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some filter movement. It's going to be really, really simple. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to just bring up a low pass four filter here. This is a four pole low pass filter, mean, meaning that it has um, a steeper drop off on the high end than a low pass two pole filter. So I'll go ahead and we'll put the cutoff right about here, so you can hear the sound isn't quite as bright right now. And I'm just going to go ahead and add an envelope to modulate the cutoff a little bit. Not that far, just a little bit. And you can hear that resonant peak move in there. Here's without the resonance. The resonant peak is going to give a little boost to the cutoff frequency so you can hear that filter movement a little bit more. And you can adjust this to taste. If you go too high, you're going to get too much emphasis on the resonant peak. Might be cool, definitely useful for a lot of things. So okay, I'll go ahead and just leave this here. Let's put it just a little bit lower and let's get a nice range for that. Okay, so this is the envelope down here. All I'm doing is I'm extending the decay a little bit and I'm lowering the sustain level a bit so that uh, we're not changing the timbre of the sound so much, but as we extend the decay a bit, we can get uh, prolonged movement in the sound. Okay, so it'll have a little bit more movement for a longer period of time, even though we're not drastically changing the character of the sound. So you can hear that with the decay really short, it's kind of just sitting there right at the moment. So we're not changing the character that much once again. We're just giving it a little bit of a, of a longer decay, a little bit more movement. And the other thing that I'd like to do is just add a little bit of uh, velocity modulation of the overall amplitude of this envelope. That means that the harder the key is hit, uh, the, the more of this range will be filled out by the envelope, the larger it will be. We can just add a little bit of variation in there. We can also add key tracking so that as uh, we go up the keyboard, as we hit higher notes, this envelope will grow as well. It will modulate the size. Now keep in mind, it's never going to go outside the boundaries that we set up here. Okay, now that we've got that basic filtering in place, we're only going to use one filter on this sound, by the way. Uh, let's turn over to the wave shapers. We're going to start with insert one here, and let's go ahead and get the hard clipper going. And the hard clipper is basically just going to clip the sounds. I've heard a lot of people say, oh man, it sounds so cool when you turn things up so loud that it clips. Now, this is not a good thing to do when you're mixing, when you're mixing a song or when you're mixing as a DJ because you get distortion, but I've always told students there are responsible ways to go about creating clip distortion, and this is one of those ways. We can use a hard clipper. So let's go ahead and here's without, here's with. Okay, and now the key with these hard clippers and, and the wave shaper that we're going to use as well. The key with these to get a really uh, a big sound is to use more than one, but to not go overboard on any particular one of them. Now, just jacking everything up to 10 and going for an amazing sound is for babies, okay? Let's be a little bit more surgical with what we do. Let's, let's push this up a little bit, we, but we have a dry wet and we have the amount of drive. So what I'm going to do is I'll push this up to a little more than halfway and I'll bring up the dry wet slowly. Meow. <laughs> 
So it's adding some really nice crunch to the sound, but the key is to not lose any detail. Okay, if we really want a nice, big, bright digital sound, you don't want to lose detail on the top end. In fact, the, the more detailed your top end is, that will guide the ear downward, and that low end will, will shine through very nicely. So here's with the drive all the way up. I mean, it's quite nice, but it's a little, it's a little, a little much, just slightly, okay? So we've got that in place. These insert effects can go a lot of different places within the signal chain of Massive. They can go between the oscillator and the filter. They can go after the filter. They can go between the filters. They can go after everything. And we control that in the routing tab, okay? So I'll just go ahead and make sure that insert one is right after filter one. That's where I want it to be. These distortion modules are really going to react to filter movement and timbral change very strongly, and that's what we're going for here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put insert two right here because that's the next thing that we're gonna use, okay? We're also going to use this LFO in a moment. Let's go ahead to insert two, and I'll go ahead and turn on the sign shaper. Now the sign shaper is just going to kind of alter the shape of the audio waveform that's going through it towards a sine wave, and this creates distortion. So it's taking points on a sine wave and points on the wave that's coming into it, the incoming audio signal, and it's sort of moving the incoming audio signal points towards where they would be if it were a sine wave, and we can get distortion from that. So I'll turn drive up, and let's go ahead and just turn the dry wet up slowly. <laughs> Okay, so we've got some nice harmonics going on. That's definitely a nice sound, and we can really push up the drive if we want to. We get some nice artifacts popping out. In fact, this is what we're going to use to create our uh, modulation or our wobble. So I'll go ahead and I'll put an LFO on here. Let's use LFO number seven. I'm just going to yank this down. Okay, actually, let's pu push it up. Okay, so now the uh, LFO number seven is uh, modulating the drive on this shaper. Let's take a listen to how that sounds. So that's pretty good. The range is a little large at the moment, so I'll just pull it down. So that's pretty good for me. I like that. I'm all about it. I'm having fun. Uh, you can go ahead and adjust that to taste how you would like, um, but it's totally up to you. And uh, we'll just make sure that this is in the right place. You know, if we move this thing around, we, it'll sound a little bit different. We can move uh, insert two back here just by clicking. Much different sound, but we put it over here. And let's hear it with the drums here. So now that's pretty good, and remember that you can go over to the LFO and you can beat sync it if you want. That's my favorite game at Dubspot, the Will It Sync game. All right, so now that we've got that there, let's put some finishing touches on the sound. Now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to use an envelope, envelope number two, uh, to modulate the pitch of oscillator one. And I'm going to turn it up to about three octaves, okay? Now, this is a great way to add punch to a drum sound as well, by the way, but it's something that I really like to use on a really aggressive bass sound, and I'll show you. Let's go ahead and solo this. Here's what it sounds like now. <laughs> So we've got some sliding around, but if we pull the attack all the way down, pull the sustain level all the way down, as we move the decay in, what we're going to hear is that we lose that pitch drop, that audible pitch drop, and we will actually end up with something that's very succinct, a very quick, punchy sound. <laughs> Here's without. Okay, 
So we've got that. And one other thing that we could do is we can take a macro here. A macro is just going to enable us uh, to use one MIDI controller to control multiple destinations. And I'll just turn up the decay using this macro here, as well as the attack, so we can get a nice long uh, pitch slide out of some of the notes. Here's what it would sound like with a pitch slide. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to go back to envelope one and just bring the sustain up slightly. It's getting a little too dark for my taste. We'll move that resonance up. So if we go ahead and we automate this thing using the mod wheel, I'll go ahead and MIDI learn this to my mod wheel. Then. Uh, we can go ahead and have some variation of the sound and let's uh, we could also put this one other place Maybe it'll dial back the cutoff frequency. Maybe we boost up the resonance a little bit There's a lot of fun stuff. You could put this on the reverb You could do anything you want with it. You can modulate pitch, but here's what it sounds like I've got some automation already in there uh, with the mod wheel <laughs> All right, so you can definitely go ahead and adjust. Maybe it. There we go. We put up that cutoff frequency and we get that huge sound coming through. The last thing we're going to do to this sound is adjust the voicing. This will do two things. First of all, we'll put it in monophonic so that I can go ahead and use a glide, which is going to transition between pitches. So we get like a narrow. So that it's actually gliding between pitches as opposed to stepping. So you can hear that right here. So we got that. Now we can go over to the voicing tab. We can add a unison voice. Okay, so now we have a copy of the pitch that's being played at any given time. Monophon means we can only play one pitch at a time, but if we turn up the unisono number, we can have a copy or two or eight of that particular note being played. I'll just do two, and I'm going to turn on the pitch cutoff and just detune this slightly. <laughs> Okay, this is really common uh, to create a chorus sound, but the cool thing here is we'll make it bigger by panning it out. This pan position thing, if we turn it on, will enable us to pan out our, our uh, unisono voices, meaning that on the left you'll have a slightly detuned pitch from the one on the right, and it's going to make it sound really big. This is a great widening trick. So here's without the pan position. Here's without pitch cutoff. Here's with pitch cut off, and here's with the pan position. And now, I'm just going to add a little side chain compression from my kick drum, and let's bring it all back in, and baby, we've got a bass sound, okay? I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on Massive. My name is Evan Sutton. I'm the co-designer and the teacher of the sound design program here at DubSpot in New York City and online. I'm also known as Astrolith. Catch me at astrolith.net and enjoy your day. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.